Bill Jenkins is executive director of the United Methodist Christ Ministry Center. He shows me the spaces he's improvised to address what more and more people are calling a migrant crisis. We have become a virtual refugee camp right here in the heart of San Diego. Since the influx of Haitians started two months ago, the center has provided shelter to more than 800 who are awaiting court hearings after passing through immigration. Some seek political asylum. Others are here for economic reasons. They wear tracking devices on their ankles, so immigration authorities know where they are. They have to recharge them every four hours. There aren't enough beds for everyone, so some sleep on the floor or on church pews. To pass the time, the Haitians hold impromptu services in the church, playing piano, singing, and praying. They practice English with bilingual dictionaries. About 90% have plans to head to Miami, where they have relatives. They will fly tomorrow to Miami. Staff members like Jimmy Marcelin help between 10 and 20 Haitians buy plane tickets per day. Depends on how fast the family could send them a ticket, or how fast the family could send them money to purchase a ticket. Among those with plans to leave is Jean-Ricardo Beauvoir. I plan to go to school so I can learn English and a skill so I can work. Three months ago, he embarked on a journey through some of the world's most dangerous countries to get here, like El Salvador and Honduras. I saw people who died, who were injured, who drowned. He says he had to contend with corrupt military, organized crime, hunger, and thirst. He says life at the center is worlds away from what he experienced on his trip. They give us a place to sleep here, which is very helpful because there's nowhere else for us to go, because hotels are so expensive here. The migrants also eat food donated by Catholic charities and other groups, dozens of canned items and boxes of fruit. But it runs out quickly. Steve Pierre, another migrant, says he came so that he could help his children back in Haiti. He plans to send them money. He says family is priority number one for Haitians. It's another philosophy. I'm an electrician, but I want my children to accomplish more. He says most Haitians are crossing through San Isidro instead of elsewhere because they've heard it works that way. That's the information you get from people who already crossed, if you understand, the people who already made the journey. Initially, U.S. immigration authorities were dropping Haitians off on the streets of downtown San Diego, and the center was picking them up. Now, Immigration and Customs Enforcement is dropping them off directly at the church. Jenkins says if it weren't for his center, the Haitians would be forming a large homeless community in San Diego. But he says he's seen backlash for his work, including threats of violence. I know that there's no more divisive word in the English vocabulary right now than the word immigration. I call it the I word. Jenkins blames the polarizing political environment. He points out that the Haitians are not here illegally. They came through Customs and Border Protection. Many have legitimate asylum cases. Because the gangs are telling them, okay, for your sons, if your sons don't join our gang, we're going to kill you. If your daughters don't become prostitutes or drug runners for us, we're going to kill them. And what would you do? You'd do the same thing that these folks are doing. You would pick up your family and you would leave. Jenkins recalls a passage from the Bible, Matthew 25. Which is my mantra for the rest of my life. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was sick, I was in prison, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, you cared for me. He says it motivates him to help the Haitians, but he thinks the sentiment has grown scarce elsewhere. So Jenkins is telling the Haitians not to wander outside the center unless they have to. He wants to keep them safe. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News.